الَّذِينَ أَحَتَّ مِنْهُمْ Now, the clear reference to the Jews. Because the Prophet, when he came over to Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was a masterpiece of his, you know, statesmanship. If you read the book written by Montgomery Watt, Muhammad at Medina, he wrote the biography of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in two volumes, Muhammad at Makkah, Muhammad at Medina. Although there was a trick, a very subtle, you know, trick in it, but I don't want to go into that detail. But you know, he uses all the words of praise in English language in superlative form for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His statesmanship, his far sight, his understanding of the situation. And one of the things that he cites is that he immediately on reaching Medina, he concluded treaties with all the three tribes of Jews who were living round about Medina. He, you know, just had them in the, in, in, in the fold of that Misak, Misak Medina. And a joint defense treaty was concluded with them. This is very important. But what happened? These people, they concluded the treaty, but secretly they were violating it. They were sending messages to Quraysh, come, or you, you invade and we shall help from within. So they were doing it. Now this is the reference to this, this character of theirs. Those of them whom, with whom you had a treaty, Ahad. Summa yanquduna ahadahum. And they are breaking their treaty, their covenant, every time. Whenever there is time of mischief, they don't, you know, keep their words, go back on their words. And they have no fear of Allah. And they don't care for anything. So if you find them, and if you encounter them in the battlefield, فَشَرِّدْ بِهِمْ مَنْ خَلْفَهُمْ so disperse through them those who are behind them. Give them the worst punishment. So that people who are behind, who are sitting back in Medina, who are pulling the ropes, they get terrified, you know. So that is the philosophy of punishments in Islam also. The punishments in Islam, exemplary. Why? Cut off the hand. So that now theft will be eliminated from the society. In the same way, all these punishments, you know. They seem to be very, you know, for, to others they call it, they are very cruel, very harsh. But actually crime cannot be eradicated. Now it is proved. There can be no higher level of education than the level you have in America. But has this education and all this, you know, has it eradicated crime from your society? Most heinous crime is there. You can't reform this society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed in the same way to those enemies of Allah. Whomsoever you find in the battlefield, give him the severest punishment so that it terrifies those who are sitting behind in Medina and you know they also get the message through them. So that they may be admonished and they think twice before, before taking any step against you. This is also very important. Every ayah of Quran is important. Someone from some one aspect, the other from some other aspect, but every word of Allah is most important. If you fear a treachery from any group with whom you have a tra treaty, well, you are faithful, you are fulfilling the, all the conditions of your side of the treaty. But you feel that the other party is treacherous. It's not keeping its terms of treaty. So throw back to them their treaty on equity basis. In Allah, verily Allah doesn't like the treacherous ones. Now what's the message in this ayah? If you keep the treaty and take any step against that, that, that group or, or nation or tribe, this is treacherous. If you want and you decide that you have to take some action against them, first of all declare that no treaty between you and us now. This is the character of the Muslims. Not treachery. Having a treaty legally and under the table fighting each other. This behaves of non-Muslims but not of Muslims. 
whenever you have a treaty and you feel that the other party is not keeping the treaty but also not declaring that the treaty is finished but you before taking any step against them you must declare that now this treaty stands annulled then you take this step wala ya sabna alladhina kafaru sabaqu annahu la yujizun and these people who have rejected the faith because the jews rejected the faith although they knew muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet of allah yarifunahu kama yarifuna abnahu we have read it so many times so they rejected knowingly la yasabna alladhina kafaru sabaqu they don't think they will escape in now la yujizun they are not going to overcome or outwit or outdo allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makrullah you know they can't keep them safe from that wa'iddu lahum mastata'atum and oh believers keep ready with you a'iddu lahum prepare against them mastata'atum min quwwati all the force that you can gather which is in your power now this is this appears to be somewhat contradictory you have faith in allah so allah will look after everything allah will take care of it. no you have to do whatever you can you don't leave any stone unturned you have to do whatever you can do then have faith in allah there is a very beautiful incident of the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a bedouin came to see him and you know he didn't tie the knee of the she camel he was riding just left her as free and stepped into the mosque to meet the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked why didn't you tie the leg the knee of the she camel he said i i i have faith in allah i have trust in allah the prophet said no go back aqilha summa tawakkal go and tie the knee and then have faith in allah and confidence in allah whatever you can do you have to do but don't think that you can do anything only through your own power or your own you know endeavors blessings of allah are required finally everything rests with him his decision you know that will be implemented wa'idu lahum mastata'atu min quwwati wa bi ribat al khayl and also the steeds of war today you know the tanks you should have the 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 all the things you know everything you must have with you as much as you can and here let me mention the atomic capability is a very big blessing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to pakistan and these people are very fearful lest we can prepare and we explode an atomic bomb although they have it they say this is exclusive right of ours we can have it we are mature enough you know we won't misuse it but you are not dependable people you you may misuse it so that is actually we are not grateful to allah subhanahu wa taala and we shall be brought to the book we gave you this capability and this capability came to pakistan miraculously we couldn't get it it was from allah's grace that we got it but you know all the pressure on that country that you stop it you cap it you you know take it roll it back and so on it's going on but allah's command is different whatever you can do you must prepare and you must keep ready wa'idu lahum mastata'atu min quwwati wa min ribat al khayl turhibuna bihi adu wallah so that you terrorize with these things the enemies of allah wa aduwakum and and your enemies your enemies are allah's enemies allah's enemies are your enemies you are with allah and allah is with you وَآخَرِينَ مِن دُونِهِمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَهُمْ اللَّهُ يَعْلَمُونَ And there are others beside them whom you don't know, Allah knows. You have a fifth columnist, you know, people here in your society. When they will see that Muslims are very ready, then they will also be terrorized. And they won't be able to take any courage against you, to show any courage and take any action against you. So you have to remain prepared and gather whatever force. of whatever kind is possible you must have at your disposal wa ma tunfiqu min shay'in and because for this preparation you need money you need funds you need finances for that the encouragement wa ma tunfiqu min shay'in fa fi sabilillah yufaylakum antum la tuslamu whatever you will spend in the way of allah 
to procure all these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you fully, reward you fully. You are failakum. It will be repaid you in full. full. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُسْلَمُونَ And you will not be wronged. وَإِنْ جَنَهُ لِسَّلْمُ فَنْجَحَ لَهَا And if these people, if they incline to peace, فَنْجَحَ لَهَا You also incline. Because if they want a peace, all okay, have peace with them. And have a treaty with them. وَتَوَقْتَلَ لَا اللَّهِ And then you have faith in Allah. That if they are making this treaty dishonestly, they want to do something else, Allah will take care of them. But if you feel that they are going to do something wrong, then first of all, you throw the treaty on their faces and then only you can take this step. Your moral level must be must, much higher, must be much higher than their moral level. It will be, should be visible to the people. What's the moral level of the Muslims and what's the moral level of the Jews and the, and the Mushrikeen of Makkah? وَإِنْ يُرِيدُوا يَخْدَعُوكَ the same thing which I have already said. If they intend to deceive you, find hasbak Allah. So then Allah is sufficient for you. He will take care of them all. It is He. It is He who has strengthened you with His own help and with the Muslims. He has provided you these companions. He has provided you these volunteers who are ready to sacrifice everything, who are trying, who are ready to lay down their lives, who cherish death in the way of Allah. Shahadat hai matloob wa maqsood-e mu'min, namal-e ghanimat na kishwar ko shai. Whom have you have given you these people? Allah has given you. So Allah helps you directly, and this is Allah's help which has come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, through these companions, these fellows, your helpers. Because what happened to Moses, we have read in Surah Al-Ba'idah. When he called upon his people, now go and fight for the cause of Allah. They said, clearly replied, no, we are not going to move. We are sitting here. You go and take your Lord with you. And take your staff also with you. And go and drive them out from this country. And then we shall only enter this country. But Muhammad Sassan got the companions who were ready to lay down their lives. وَإِنْ يُرِيدُوا وَيَخْتَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَسْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And another special favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done on you. He has brought the hearts of your companions together. United them. They are more than real brothers. وَلَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ had you spent all the wealth that is in this world, you could not have united their hearts. Iman has united them. Bunyanu Marsus. Now they are like a reinforced structure. No breach, no dispute. No money could have brought about that type of unity which Iman has brought. It is Allah who has united their hearts. Innahu Azizun Hakim, verily, He is all powerful and He is all wise.